Hi everyone! Welcome back to another episode of the Seattle Stitcher. My name is Megan. You can find me on Instagram as Megan underscore Babauta underscore on Ravelry as Mama Made VM. You can email me at the Seattle Stitcher at gmail.com. Any of my other social media links will be in the down bar below, as well as the name of my Facebook group page and all that good stuff. As I say, you are all very, very welcome here. So I usually start just right with my starts, but I wanted to say, um, you know, welcome to everybody who's new. And I also have like a special request, okay? I mean, up to you if you wanna fulfill it, but I have like slowly been crawling closer to 4,000 subscribers and I would just love to know something about you, the person watching this. <laughs> I, I guess I share little bits of my life here and there outside of cross-stitching and knitting and crafting, but I'd love to know more about you guys. So leave me a comment below, you know, and thank you so much for subscribing. Um, I hope you guys really do feel welcome. So, like I said, I do like to hop right in with the starts and let's get rolling. So, me and the girlies, so Cam the Stitcher, Marjorie Maid, Bridgen for the Museum Stitcher, and myself, we started a sal called Manning May Sal. And it's been such a fun one because there has been a lot of just traffic for it with the hashtag on Instagram. So it's been really fun to watch. I actually need to take some time this weekend and go and look through the hashtag and just comment on some stuff and like some stuff. You guys are picking the most amazing projects. You know me though, I am definitely a Halloween gal. So I'm gonna pop a picture here here of the pattern that I chose. This is Pumpkin Quaker, or I think it's um, Pumpkin Patch by Carolyn Manning. And I purchased this as a PDF. I got it off of her website because Carolyn Manning does have a direct website. I had some a couple of Instagram messages asking how I purchased my pattern and I went onto her website directly and just purchased a PDF. I think she even had like a 30% code going on or something like that. There was a discount, so it was very affordable for me. And I really liked the project and it called for all DMCs, all that fun stuff. So I uh, I picked a really different fabric for mine and I do have a very small start, I'm not gonna lie. For some reason, I didn't get too, too deep into this one. It's one that I'm debating if I'm gonna bring it to StitchCon or not because it's on Ada, so. I've got a little upper corner, but I am stitching this on 14 count Monster Mash, which is a picture this plus fabric. I think it's a 14 or a 16 count. I'll have to correct it on the screen because I actually don't remember. I am the worst. <laughs> it's a 16 count. My apologies. And here is my little start. So I am really loving this. How cute is it? I think it looks really good on the fabric as well. Also, last, last time I filmed, I had held up the DMCs that were called for and I had thought that the called for didn't include a purple. For some reason, I either the like the DMC was in the wrong bucket or I just completely pulled the wrong one because there is a purple in here. So there definitely is a true like Halloween purple. So I didn't need to add anything. I think I'm missing one shade. I grabbed two of the same color on accident. Again, I think my DMCs at my local craft store were just kind of mixed up a little bit, but it's just looking really great. My needle minder, which is the Golden Girls, is a Mad Reminders needle minder. I will link their page below. It's an Etsy shop and they're very affordable for me. So really enjoy purchasing from them and good customer service, decent shipping time, but very upfront with their shipping time and always on time. So love that. So yeah, that's how that's going. And I'm really, really liking it on this fabric. I did get a, a fat half of this fabric because I wanted to be able to kind of pick and choose where I laid out my, my little blocks. But I think the blocks themselves are like 100 by 100, so they're not very large at all. Let me just hold this back. And I just have this in one of these little Amazon bags. I will link these below. Um, I link these and there's no commission to me, just so you guys know. It's not an Amazon storefront. I literally am just linking the bags themselves. I'll also link the floss drops that I use. I use these uh, clear acrylic crop of floss drops and I get those off of Amazon as well. All right, so my next start, um, myself and the same group of girlies, we decided that we wanted to start the Vanity Sampler, which was a new release from Hello from Liz Matthews. Beautiful pattern, love the original coloring. I'm gonna go ahead and pop a picture of the original coloring here. 
isn't it so pretty it's very muted very beautiful soft and we actually all really like this and we're using the hashtag vanity sampler sal if you did want to join along personally i'm using the hashtag goth vanity sampler because i did steal the conversion from cam the stitcher and i'm gonna go ahead and pop a picture of her conversion here so this is a mock-up from rxp which is an app for apple users so if you are looking for an app that's very similar to Pattern Keeper, I believe is the name of it. Um, this is a great app. It's Markup RXP, and I've been using it, really enjoying it. Luckily, I have some girlfriends now that are more versed in using it than myself, so they've been able to help me throughout the process, but I've been really enjoying it. And I started this just last night in the very wee hours of the evening because we decided we would start it on the 20th, which is today, Saturday, but I wanted to get a little bit of a head start, not much. So I'm switching this two over two on 30 to count heritage by picture this plus and this is my little tiny start isn't this fabric just lovely though i have like oh my hair is stuck on there of course what's new <laughs> i just started the upper corner and got one of the little flower motifs in because i really wanted to see how the colors played out because i actually i have a large enough cut of fabric where I have two different options kind of for my cut of heritage. So my first section is this lighter section here. This is a bit lighter and a lot more modeling. Well, I guess it's not a lot more, but it's more noticeable modeling. Whereas over here, it was very dark and kind of all over dark but also still very noticeable. I mean, it's a beautiful piece. I love that I kind of gotten the best of both worlds on this cut of it, but I did decide after like just looking at the flosses, cause this is her DMC conversion. Again, Cameron's DMC conversion. So I decided to go with a lighter bit. It was really, I really had a hard time picking, but I just felt like I might lose some of the colors if I chose to side with the dark bit here. So this is looking great. I'm really enjoying it. I also, the wording on here, the youth, et cetera, whatever it says, um, that is in this blue shade. So that's kind of what really made me pick this lighter because I felt like it really popped on this, this lighter creamy shade. So I'm hoping that all works out. I still have this in the Q snap because I did work on it last night. This is a needle minder from 123 Stitch. Um, it's just, I think I looked up blue needle minder, but it's, I think Agate is the name of it. I'm not sure if it's in stock because I did buy it about a year ago now because that was my very first needle minder I ever bought. So yeah, I'm really enjoying that. Now I have one more start, I believe. Let me look around for it. Okay, so my last start, this is in a me made bag. I'm so sad I didn't pick up more of this fabric because now that I'm using it, I'm just obsessed. I love the way it looks. It's so Halloween and so fun. And this is actually a restart for me. I had originally started this project, which is Teresa Kogut's Scylla Quakers, or sorry, Scylla Witches Quaker. So I had originally started this on an Atomic Ranch Pumpkin King fabric, and the fabric is absolutely amazing. But unfortunately, the called for flosses, especially this kind of brown black color, really got lost in the modeling on the Pumpkin King. So I did decide to restart it, but when I decided to restart it, I had taken out the darker called for variegated floss. It was a fancy floss. Um, I don't remember the name, let me see now swamp water so i have three skeins of that in stash now so i guess i'll figure something else out to use it on but i decided to just swap it with anchor black because i kind of wanted that like bold dark contrast and you'll see why when you see my my new pick of fabric my new fabric is a 32 count jackson fabric arts in the colorway burnt sienna and it is absolutely amazing oh goodness that's a really really good representation of the color it, it really is just perfect pumpkin orange and my little restart here I just could not put this one down I am obsessed I absolutely love it I did keep the called for guacamole which is the pop of color that's the green and I am really really loving this this fabric I have had in stash for a little while now and I knew I wanted a Halloween piece on it of course I mean look at it but I wasn't sure which one and I'm just really really enjoying this it's I don't want to put it down <laughs> the anchor black really pops against the fabric it looks so Halloween every time I'm stitching on it at my desk if a client comes in they automatically are like oh what's that you know because it's just so vibrant and fun 
and look at that contrast. You can just really tell that that's a witch. You can tell that that's an owl. I'm, I'm loving that you can tell what everything is. When I first started stitching this on the other fabric, it's the variegated floss with the modeling in the fabric. I really, you could barely tell what I was stitching, but you know what? I've already surpassed where I was with my first initial start of this project. So I'm really happy with that. It's just, oh, I love it. And I would like to say as well, Jackson Fabric Arts, that is where I've purchased this fabric from. They are so affordable. I almost don't want to tell you guys about them because now they're about to be sold out. <laughs> Jackson Fabric Arts, I want to say that it's $19 USD and this is like a, I would say a fat quarter. I mean, 17 by 20, maybe 18 by 20. Is this a fat quarter or a fat half? I don't know y'all. 22 inches maybe longer. I think this is even longer. I don't know. I'll measure it and I'll put the measurements on the screen, but I just felt like that was a really good price point for just such a fun fabric. And they offer a really good selection of colors. They also have ready to ship. And that's what I prefer to purchase from these days. I don't think I'm ever going to purchase from dyers that have like where you pre-order fabrics and stuff. I just, I don't think personally that any fabric is worth waiting like six months for, especially something that is quite costly. I'd rather go to my LNS, which it is a bit of a drive. It's about an hour away, Threadneedle Street, but I'd rather just drive down to see Denise and see what she has in stock than wait six months, you know? Um, I do also, by the way, want to start kind of just talking about my experiences when I am purchasing, because I find that like, I, you know, I'm a consumer. Yeah, I have this fall stoop channel, but I'm still a consumer, you know, and I'm not getting any kind of special treatment um, or fast shipping or anything like that. I'm also just purchasing just like you guys are. And I would have liked to know when I first started stitching, like, hey, you know, this shop actually doesn't ship your stuff. They're really, really bad and it's notorious in the floss tube world and in the, in the cross stitching world, but no one really talks about it. Like, I would have liked to know those things. And although I don't want to bring like a tinge of negativity to my channel, that's not my, my, my goal. My goal is really just to share with you guys my own personal buying experiences so that you can then know and feel a little bit better when you're making your purchases. Because, you know, sometimes it's hard when you are purchasing from an Etsy shop and maybe there's very little reviews. And so you don't really know how the fabrics are, or you don't really know how it's going to come up. Well, I will say this shop, I haven't had any issues with. Every single time I've got my shipping on time, I've never had a delay in my shipping and the customer service is really, really great. Um, just very awesome. It's yeah, organic hemp cross stitching fabric. So it's just a 32 count. She only offers 32 count Ada or 32 count linens, but it's very easy to stitch on. This is what the stitches look like two over two. And that's with the fancy floss as well as the, the anchor black. So I really, I love this shop. I, I'm going to link them below. Um, the only thing I ever really honestly had an issue with is the way that they dye. The very center of the fabric usually does have a little bit of white splotching on it, but that doesn't really bother me. Um, I did order a piece of like a really, really dark black blue fabric and the white splotches on there um, are in the center as well. They're a little bit larger, but again, it doesn't really bother me. It kind of adds to the fabric in my opinion. So that is um, my review on Jackson Fabric Arts and I'm really loving this, this pattern. Again, it is the Scylla Witches Quaker by Teresa Kogut. So I'm really liking this. Um, I love this bag. I know I made it, so I mean, don't mean to toot my own horn, but she's the tootin'. It's amazing. Um, it's a fabric really. And I'm pretty sure I got this fabric from Gigi's Quilts in Yelm, Washington. It's a little tiny town, but I have family out there. So I'm in the town quite often. So yeah, that was my last start of the past three weeks because yes, guys, it has been three weeks since I talked to you last. I took a break for Mother's Day weekend. I am a mother. I have a five-year-old daughter. Her name is Amira. And I just, um, I just got really busy that weekend. So here we are three weeks later. Um, I'm going to move on to my next project. Again, this is in one of those little Amazon bags. I really am liking these, especially for patterns that I just have PDFs of, because that means I only need the fabric and the flosses in here. Score. Love that. So we're going to move into our whips. And this one is, oh goodness, a Kathy Barrick pattern. I'm going to put a picture of the pattern on the screen. For some reason, I can't remember the name of it for the life of me. Oh, you know, 
mom brain. It's okay. We're going to blame it on that. So I did do a complete color conversion on this. Um, I don't have a mock-up. I, ha I never ended up making a mock-up of what it would look like because I'm kind of just changing the, changing the flosses as I go. I think I have a picture of where I was before. So I'll pop a picture here of where I was before, just while I'm talking to you about my floss conversion. If anyone is in, um, good intentions by Kathy Barrick, I knew she'd come to me. <laughs> so if anyone's interested in my color conversion, I will send it on over to you. You can leave a comment down below or you can send me an email and I'll get it on over. But I am using all DMCs despite one fancy floss, which is a Roxy Flox Co in the colorway Obsidian. This is their old branding tag because I did purchase this a little while ago now. But yeah, I'm really, really liking this, this color conversion I've done. I know I might not use all of these shades, but I kind of wanted to pull what I was liking blending together. And so here is where I've gotten to in my good intentions. And this is stitched on 32 count uh, Lugana from Picture This Plus in the colorway Gingerbread. It's kind of a pinky, really warm sandstone color shade with beautiful modeling. I'm actually really enjoying working on this Lugana. Lugana is not my favorite, but I'm really liking this one because I like a tighter weave. And so I think my stitches look amazing on this. Um, two over two on it is very full, but I'm really loving it. I uh, did actually initially sti the, stitch the scissors with a golden thread, you know, the cry neck threads, but I wasn't loving the way it looked. Um, I tried then a DMC Diamant and that just, I didn't love it either, but I had already pulled some of these kind of pewtery brown tones to do the spools of thread. And I thought, you know what, that actually looks kind of like some golden scissors. And I did use a conversion. I'll pop the lady's name here on the screen, her, her Instagram, because I can't remember it off the top of my head. And um, I asked her for her little conversion of the cat that's on top of the spool. Because if you guys didn't know, I did find a stray cat as a little kitten at the dealership that I work at. And um, I looked for his owner for like six months. No one ever came forward. And so I've kept him ever since. His name is Binks and he is an all black, just really fluffy little cat. He loves my daughter and he loves my husband. He usually like sits up near my shoulder when I'm stitching, but he doesn't sit on me anymore like he did when he was really little. But yeah, he's a good cat and he's just funny and the best. We absolutely love him. So yeah, I got him in, my little Binksy man. I think I did more of her dress, um, which I'm really loving. Uh, I added a little cross necklace because I wear a cross necklace quite often. I have a few of them. I think I might have done a little more wording. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I added more to the banner. I did do the little needle in the back stitching for the needle. I don't know. I just felt like it. And I wanted the back, I wanted the thread to be one of these pink tones. Um, I did change her hair and I also added glasses, but that was alterations that I made in the previous, the previous time I showed this, which I don't know if that was the last time or the time before that I filmed but how cute is it? Oh, I love it. And I just made her really pale. I know I have kind of a bronzy tan going on right now, but listen, it's all fake. It's all fake. I'm actually very pale. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really loving this project. It just folds up into the tiniest little bundle. And so I pop that in there and I throw the flosses in and this was just a really fun one. It's really easy to stitch on and I like kind of just like picking it up and making the alterations to the colorways on a whim as I'm stitching. I'm really enjoying it. So that's, that's been a fun one. My next whip is in this giant, amazing bag, Alexis underscore my amazing world. That is her floss tube channel. She gifted me this bag last year and it is absolutely amazing. So uh, I have in here my birthday start, which I honestly didn't get very much done, but I think it's just because I don't know, I kind of had a boring birthday this year and I didn't really do very much. That's what happens, I guess, sometimes. So this one is my Plum Street Samplers, A Shepherd's Song. I really love this project. I particularly wanted to start something that was very spring themed for my birthday because I, yeah, I was born April 28th and, you know, I'm a, tour, I'm a Taurus baby and I just thought this was so springy and so cute. That border is massive, but I really, really like this pattern and I wanted to get it started. I decided on a 32 count, picture this plus Nessie with all the called for flosses. So here they are. It's a mix of fancy flosses as well as some DMCs. DMCs are on the floss drops on the back and the fancy flosses are on their original cards. 
So really pretty. And I will pop a picture of where I was before. You guys will have to bear with me. I just have the needles stuck into a lot of these projects because I ran out of needle minders. I'm going to purchase some at StitchCon, I promise. Okay. I just, I'm on a no buy this month, but we'll get more into that as we get later on in the video. <laughs> so here is my progress. This is one fabric that I am telling you, it's like the perfect fun neutral. That's a really good representation of the color. It's like a turquoisey baby blue. It's the perfect sky blue. I'm telling you, if you're looking for a sky scene, get some Nessie from Picture This Plus. I highly recommend Hollis Hands Creates. That's where I purchased this from. She's absolutely amazing. Her name's Christine. And you guys know, she's just probably one of my favorite shops to purchase from. Her and Abby, the Top Knot Stitcher, are just so reliable, so amazing. Oh, by the way, Abby, the Top Knot Stitcher, she's having a dinky dye sale. Ooh, go check it out. They are, I think, $4 a skein right now as I'm filming this but that could change over the weekend. You never know. Um, it's all in her whim, right? So yeah, I'm just really loving this. I did make one alteration so far, which was swapping out this little crown with a golden shade, just so it would pop up a little bit more. And I am really, really loving this. I just did a little bit more fill-in work and a little bit more of the foliage around the little rose there, but not very much, just kind of basic fill-in. Um, I'm doing this one over two on the 32 count as well, which I do, I do think I'm kind of over one over two on 32. I like two over two on 32. I think that's just a better, it's, it kind of suits this project though to do one over two, you know? So you gotta go with what works. And I think this does work and it looks really great. Um, it's quite an extensive floss list, I mean, She's a long one, but it's worth it. It's a beautiful project. And I do feel like it was a special one to start for my birthday. I mean, look at all those fancy flosses. I love it. This is probably like one of my favorite colors. This light oh, blue, I love that. And these soft pinks, these beautiful goldeny. Oh, I just, I really, really like this one. Um, and I really love that fabric. So like I said, check out Hollis Hands Crates. She's always got a good stock and inventory and she's just an amazing shop. So that was my next whip. Following that, I pulled out this project, which I made this bag and I know that this is a Halloween bag, but look, I just love Halloween, okay? Um, I'm also very proud of this bag. Like, I mean, the sewing, is, she's getting better. <laughs> <laughs> and so in here, I have a modern folk embroidery pattern. This is Love Gains. I'll pop a picture on the screen of the pattern because it is a PDF pattern. I am stitching this one over two on a 36 count oyster shell, which is a fox and rabbit fabric, which by the way, they were really close by me in Washington. I, I follow them on Instagram and I saw them posting pictures of, um, some areas they were in in Washington state that were not too far away from me. Like I can't believe we didn't run into each other upon the time, but unfortunately I missed their like meet and greet that they had at Acorns and Threads in Oregon because I work a lot. <laughs> Um, I work, I went back to working full time as you guys know. And so, although I have an awesome boss who lets me leave early a lot of evenings, which is wonderful, but I still was, I, there was no way I could drive all the way down to Oregon and, and meet them. So anywho, um, I, I love their fabrics. Their fabrics are amazing. The oyster shell is absolutely beautiful. I'll pop a picture of the pattern where I was before though. And I am stitching this as a matter of fact, with some dinky dyes. This is the dinky dyes thread in the colorway mystic pools. Just show you a skein of it. It's so pretty. Oh, I just love it so much. And like I said, I'll have a photo up of where I was previously because I didn't do too much on this, but honestly, I, I kept seeing Bridgen, the museum stitcher, pulling hers out and hers is so pretty. It's like probably my favorite cross stitch project I've ever seen. I really love it. Like I love it that much. So um, I totally mimicked her and did a purple on purple and I pulled mine out and started getting a little bit more stitching into it just because seeing hers makes me realize how much I want this project hanging in my house. It's absolutely stunning. I'll give you a better representation of the color of the fabric. So there's more spot on with the fabric because I am using natural lighting today. Yeah. And the Mystic Pools just is looking lovely with this. This is also from Hollis Sands Creates. Bridget knows that I, I love that shop. So and my needle minder here, which again is a Halloween needle minder, it is also from Mad for Minders, which is probably my favorite place to get needle minders. They're very affordable in my opinion. And um, like I said, just good, 
good company. Really like them. They have an Etsy shop, so I'll link that below. But really love Dinky Dyes. Check it out if Abby's still having that uh, discount going on on the Dinky Dyes and you wanted to give them a try. I'll link her... I'll link her shop below as well as the others that I've mentioned throughout the video. So my next project, this is in another bag that I sewed up for myself and this is Rose Quakers. It is, I think like a German or a Dutch company. I'm going to pop a picture on the screen because like here's the black and white version of it. I have a color copy of the the front somewhere but I don't even know where it's at and honestly I'll say that this like the pattern itself it really like the cover photo does not do it justice it does not do it justice so I'm gonna find a picture on Instagram and I'll leave the person's handle in the photo as well that is a finished photo of this so an FFO of the project um, I just looked up like hashtag Rose Quaker so I could see what it looked like stitched up before I made the purchase because the PDF alone I think is like 20 something dollars 23 26 dollars which is a bit of a higher price point for a PDF I don't mind paying that at the end of the day for a pattern I love though and I do want to support these designers so I looked up the hashtag, really loved the project, and I clicked buy right away. Um, it is a little funky. It takes a little while for you to get your your PDF in your email because they personalize every single copy. So they put your name on every single page. So there's no way that you could distribute the pattern kind of thing. Um, so this one I am stitching one over two on a 40 count the Stitch Me fabric, I believe. This is, let me see if I still have my tag. Oh no, I don't think I do. Okay, I'll have to look at my last video and see what the fabric is for this one. But I know it's a Bestitch Me fabric of the month, so I don't know if it is available, but I'm stitching it one over two on a 40 count. Right before I canceled my fabric of the month, I swapped over to a 40 count. And this is actually a restart because unfortunately, the first time I started this project, I had started it on a fabric that was labeled as a 40 count and it's actually like a 32 count. So my fabric wasn't large enough. Um, I'm really loving, loving this. I think this is hot cocoa, I think. But I'm really, really loving it. It looks beautiful. And I'm definitely bummed that my first, you know, my first fabric choice didn't work out. I still have it here inside of my bag. This is where I'd gotten to previously. I think I'd already shown this to you guys. I just, I like the way this looks a little bit better because I think the colors popped a little bit more. And unfortunately, this is also, oh yeah, hot cocoa. So I didn't need to look it up. There you go. No, she's not working. It's okay. Well, anyways, it's hot cocoa. It is a, oh no, it's a 36 count hot cocoa. And um, I really, really like it. The Besitch Me fabric of the month is totally worth it. I'm really liking it. But as you can see, like I showed with the previous fabric, it just doesn't pop quite as much. It's definitely going to be a different look, but I'm still happy with it. And the hot cocoa, my cut almost has like a tinge of a little bit of greenishness to the, the brown. So I really like it. I think it looks amazing and it's a beautiful piece. So I'm really enjoying that. I have this on Adam Hart Floss Drops in the the floss hearts. I think that's what she calls these. I don't know, but I really, really love them. They're really nice. They work well. They're super cute. They're definitely a little bit larger and thicker than my other floss drops, but I really like them. These are a recommendation from the museum stitcher, a Bridget. If you check out her channel, she does have a discount link as well. So definitely go check her out and get that code so that you can purchase some of these for yourself. She provides you with this large ring. You can get, I think she offers like 25 pack, 25 count packs and maybe 100 count, maybe 50, I'm not sure. But anywho, you can get a good little bundle for a great price. And she has just beautiful, beautiful colorways as well. So I really love that. Try to get the lighting. It's a little bit darker. I can tell the sun's already moved a little bit. <laughs> so I'm loving this project. It's a beautiful one. I will link below where you can purchase this pattern because I do know that the, um, the last time I had talked about it, some people had had a little bit of trouble finding it online. So now with this though, this is Atomic Ranch Weathered Stone. If anyone is curious, I, I need to put it back in my fabric stash. I will probably pick out the stitching later on um, at some point when I want to use it. But yeah, that is been a really fun one. My next one is in a huge bag that I sewed up for myself. I absolutely love this fabric. It is another one from Gigi's Quilting in Yelm, Washington. They do have an online shop so you can check them out there and you can always give them a call as well. They do take orders over the phone. 
So I just loved this bookstore fabric. And in here I have my Greenhouse of Oddities style because I did join this stitch along. I am way behind already, but I'm okay with that. I wasn't really planning to keep up with it. And I think it's best for me personally because I kind of just am a go with the flow kind of <laughs> person with my stitching. It's best that I go into a project just automatically being like, all right, you're not gonna keep up with this, Megan. We all know that, okay? But it'll be a good project to have when you, you feel like working on it and pulling it out. So here are all the called for DMCs. It is quite a lot of DMCs, but DMCs are a more affordable floss when it comes down to it. I mean, we all see the prices of these fancy flosses and she doesn't have a single fancy floss that's called for. I'm stitching mine on Portobello linen. This is a 36 count. I just wanted to use what I had in stash because like I mentioned previously, I am on a no buy. Um, I'm just trying to work my way up to stitch con without buying anything. It's been going actually really, really well. Oh, I just jabbed myself with a needle because of course there's no needle miner on here. Oh my goodness, I'm the worst. But here is my tiny little start. I had already started this one, so I'll have to put a picture of where I was before, and this is the progress that I've worked from since. But I really, really like this. It's so cute. It's turning out really well in the Portobello, which was one that I wasn't sure if it was really gonna work, to be honest, because some of the flosses are very close to the Portobello, particularly the gray, gray purpley colors. Um, but, you know, I'm hoping that the areas that those colors are stitched in have something surrounding them so that it won't be too bad. And you know, I have stitched some of the gray in these little marks here and down here, and I don't think it blends in too bad. So, you know, it's all right. I'm really liking it. I'm liking the project. Um, it's just one of those ones that, yeah, I knew that I wasn't going to stay stay in the, the flow of the stitch along. It's so much stitching and I really, I don't have very much stitching time, so I have to use it wisely. And I would literally have to devote like all my time just to stitching on this to get it finished. Although I will say Lola Crow Cross Stitch, I think they gave six weeks to get the, the base done, which was more than enough time if I would have started it on time, <laughs> but I didn't. I started it like a week after I bought it and it just kind of went all downhill from there. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> So that is actually all of my cross stitching. If you guys are wanting to stick around for life stuff, knitting, and some book recommendations, you're more than welcome. If not, I totally understand. Thank you so much for joining me. Again, go ahead and subscribe to my video, like my video. That would definitely help and give me the boost here, which is awesome. And leave me a comment, like I said, and let me know a little bit about yourself if you're willing to share it. <laughs> I would love to. I would love to get to know you guys, my viewers, a little bit more. Um, cause I, I feel like you guys are already my friends. So, <laughs> all right. So like I said, I'm gonna move right into knitting. So let's get into it. All right. So I'm going to start with my finished objects with knitting, which I actually knit a little bandana. This was a free pattern on Ravelry. I did make adjustments though. So I will link the pattern down below. It is a Ravelry link. So if you do have issues with using the website, I do not know of a place that this is like for sale or free. I only found it on Ravelry. So uh, what I did to change, because this is actually a worsted weight pattern, I changed it to a fingering weight because I had this really bright magenta. Um, this is Malabrigo sock yarn in the colorway. I think it is magenta or fuchsia or something like that. And anywho, I really wanted like a little bandana like this to wear with my little short sleeve button up shirts. Um, I just felt like, you know, we have like a lot of 60 degree days that it's not really hot enough to wear like a long sleeve or and maybe not every day I want to wear a little blouse, but you know, this is so cute. I love it. So you can do kind of like a little knot here, which is what I've been doing. And then sometimes I've been double knotting it as well so that I get this cute little, how cute is that? I love it. But yeah, I, I made alterations by moderating the pattern to work with a fingering weight because that's what I had and I knew I wanted this fuchsia color. So I used a US 3 needle and I cast on and knit exactly as called for. There is definitely a lot more curling because I'm using a fingering weight. I think next time, um, cause I'm definitely gonna make more of these. I really, really like this look. I actually even like it with a t-shirt like this. Like I think this in the fall or like the transitioning seasons when it's getting a little colder is gonna be ideal for me. I love this look. I love it with my, my really dark hair. I just, I love it. It's so cute. So I think I will do a slipped stitch at the beginning um, for this edge here. 
because it has curled quite a bit, you can see. So you lose a lot of the width, but luckily it's a knit fabric. So you can just pull it apart and stretch it. And I mean, it can get way bigger if you block it to be bigger, or you could just continue knitting and continue the increases and make it quite larger on your own. But I just wanted a really tiny little bandana, which by the way, bandana doesn't sound like a real word. Can we address that? Bandana. Bandana. How's that a word? <laughs> well, anyways, I'm really, really loving this. It's been just like a total staple for me. I'm really liking it. Because like I said, in well, it's weird. This time of year, we'll have days where it's in the 70s. We'll have days where it's in the 90s. And then the next week, it'll be in the 60s again. So especially in the mornings when it's only in the 50s, I've been liking like a little tiny, you know, a little tiny something around my neck. This is a really nice fingering weight wool nylon blend. So it's a very soft, very comfortable, and it's also very breathable. Merino wool is actually one of the most breathable fabrics you can get because it keeps you warm when you need to be. And it also wicks away moisture and sweat when you need to be um, cooled down. So it's just, it's great really like this I also casted on for my knitting whips a project that I'm going to bring to StitchCon so I don't really have a pattern I'm just kind of knitting to knit I wanted something that was large circumference in the round and would be easy knitting for when I'm at StitchCon. So if you guys don't know, I'll be at weekend A. I'm so excited. Um, I'm rooming with a couple of my girlfriends and we're just gonna have a blast. I'm so excited to meet you all if you're going as well. And you know, I can't wait. But my next project, I casted this on with the Wooly Cabins Fingering Weight Wool in the colorway The Long Winter. This is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. It's 463 yards to 100 grams. When I purchased this, it was $28, balls, uh, $28 for a hank like this. And I purchased three of them. And I am knitting a little t-shirt. So like I said, I don't have a pattern. I want something really oversized, cropped, and I don't want ribbing. Um, the traditional like little ribbing of a like sweater, I don't want. I want it to be more like a t-shirt where it's almost just like this tiny fold. So I did cast it on. And like I said, I wanted it to be really oversized. So this is about 11 inches of positive ease and it's gonna be very cropped and just super um, loose and comfy, a short sleeve t-shirt. And I'm thinking like a mid, Sleeve here which it will be quite wide because I'm knitting this from the bottom up so what I've done to make it to where there is no like curling of the fabric as well is I did whip stitch the brim so I've actually already knit double this length and I whip stitched it together I just wanted to get past that point so that I could bring it in my suitcase to stitch con because I I can knit without looking and especially something this simple to knit I can just you know, chat away and keep going. So I can just keep going and I can chat with you guys and enjoy my time at StitchCon because I have a feeling that I'm probably not gonna do all that much stitching. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. You know, I'm used to being interrupted with my stitching and I'm thinking like, gosh, what am I gonna do without my daughter or my husband around? It'll be wild, but it's gonna be fun. It'll be the first time I'm away from the both of them for this long, which is wild, but especially for my daughter. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> So with this, I just wanted something simple that I could bring with and no pattern, just kind of saw my gauge, figured out from there the maths of how many stitches I would need to cast on to get an about 11 inch positive ease so that I could have just this really flowy little t-shirt um, that I can wear with skirts or with denim jeans. And I'm just gonna do kind of like, yeah, this folded over edging. I'm gonna do the same thing on the sleeves. Um, I made the brim of it a two inch hem here. So there'll be, it'll be like a little bit heavier as well cause it's double thick there where it's whip stitched together, but it gives just a nice edge, you know, this continuous knit stitch, there's no cast on there. It's just gives it a nice edge. It holds it down so that there's a little bit more weight on the bottom as well since it is cropped. I'm gonna do the same two inches on the sleeve and I think I'm gonna do a one inch on the neckline when I do pick up to knit for the neckline. But yeah, I just, I've had this fabric, um, this fabric, I've had this yarn in stash for a while and I, I knew I wanted something just 
really simple so that the yarn could speak for itself because I really love this yarn. I don't know if the Wooly Cabin has this colorway available, but again, it's the long winter. I'm sure you could, if they do still, they're still around. I'll link the Etsy shop if it's still around, but I'm sure you could message them and ask if they will dye you up some. A lot of indie dyers will take uh, orders like that and they're really good about communicating timelines and getting you your yarn as quick as they can. So yeah, reach out to her if you want. Uh, the My stitch marker on here is a little ice cream cone. Super cute. I was gifted that from my Auntie Liz and Uncle George. So super cute and fun. I'm loving that. Those are my only knitting projects. I did do a bit of reading. Honestly, I listened to some books on on um, Audible. I had uh, Court of Silver and Flame. I think that's what it's called, Silver Flame. It's um, an Aquatar book. So it's the last in the series currently. And it was kind of like Nesta's storyline. I am going to say it. I'm going to say it. I'm not a Nesta fan. Even after reading the book, I just felt like a huge chunk of the book was just her self-loathing of her life. And um, it was really infuriating <laughs> to read for me. I don't really like those kind of characters and I did not enjoy the book so much as other people had, but it was still really fun to read and I'll definitely continue on with the series because I love the Aquatar series. The other book that I had read, but this was quite some time ago, was When Cats Reigned Like Kings. I will say I was really hoping that this book would more so be a history of the worshipping of cats over the centuries, but I don't know. So in the beginning, you you kind of get like a storyline of the author and it really does read like a news article. And then you end up finding out that the author is indeed a journalist. And I will say the book reads like a journalist is writing it. It doesn't read like an author. It reads like a journalist. I'm not saying that they, you know, a journalist is not an author, but the way that it reads is like I'm reading a news clip. And I don't know if that was enjoyable. It made it very easy to read. I did read it aloud to my daughter at bedtime. I just was kind of hoping to get a little bit of a deeper dive into, yeah, the the um, the weird ideologies that surround cats. Like I was really hoping to get a deeper dive, especially into the pharaohs and how they worshipped cats and the ancient Egyptians. And um, it does go over like Buddhism and their worshipping of cats. But it's just, I felt like it was more like learning the breeds almost in a way and that's not really what I was interested in. I was more interested in the history of the religions. Um, so it was a mess for me but it was a simple read and my daughter enjoyed it too because she loves cats. <laughs> um, I think I read some other things but I don't think I read anything that was a physical copy. Yeah I don't think I read anything else that was a physical copy. I think that was really everything. So I'm like looking around. Did you forget anything, Megan? Did you? Um, life updates. So like I said, it's been three weeks since I last spoke to you guys. My daughter ended up getting sick actually the week after I had filmed last. And then I got sick after her. And then there was Mother's Day weekend and you know, all these holidays and stuff. But it has been getting warmer in Washington. So it's been really nice out. Businesses have been really great at my work, knock on wood. <laughs> <laughs> so I cannot complain. It's just been a great time. I'm getting um, really excited about StitchCon. We're getting closer and closer to the like the date we leave. I'm like I said on weekend A. <clears throat> I do have some plans. So hop in right in for StitchCon plans. We are the 20th of May right now. March, April, May. Yes, the 20th of May. Wow. Time is going by so fast. <laughs> And my plans for StitchCon actually are to definitely join in the Top Knot Stitcher. She was selling the Away We Ride, which is a Blackbird Designs. It wasn't out of print. It came back into print. Super exciting. And I did purchase it. I purchased it from 123Stitch. I know I didn't purchase it from Abby. I'm sorry, girl. Well, what happened? <laughs> What happened is that I really wanted to get the flosses and everything all in one place. I didn't want to pay for shipping for multiple places because this month is a no buy for me because StitchCon's next month and I have been saving cash in a StitchCon jar. I was like, okay, we're being strict. No buy. I haven't like no, no nothing, you know? And I did, um, I did do a little bit of shopping for Mother's Day. Okay. But 
<laughs> that included getting the away we ride and getting it kitted up. I got on a one, two, three stitch. Like I said, I did have to do a couple substitutions because they did run out of the called for onyx. So I think the the alternate that one, two, three stitch suggested was actually onyx by weeks dye work. So same exact colorway name, different brand. So I did purchase th three skeins of the weeks onyx instead. And then I think, um, Pecan pie, I think was the name of it. They didn't have, so I think I actually have some in stash I could pull from, but it doesn't really bother me. I did purchase a DMC alternative for that. So I've got that kitted up with some, some linen I've had in stash from a company I ordered from when I really first got into cross stitching. Um, needle and flax, something like that. Needle and thread. I don't remember the name of the company, but I'll never order from them again. I had such a bad experience. <laughs> to be honest, but I guess that would be an acquisition, but it's kind of plays into my, my stitch comp plan. So I am going to start that because Abby, like I said, the top knot stitcher suggested that we all start this pattern away we ride. I'll pop a, a picture of it on the screen. I'll of course already have had her linked below. So you'll be able to pick it up from there. She doesn't have all of the flosses that are called for. So if you do need those, I would check out one, two, three stitch because they did have pretty much everything I needed and I'm stitching it. I think I'm going to do two over two on a 32 count. That's what I have in my stash. I actually already have it in my suitcase packed up because I'm ready to leave. <laughs> so those are my plans for like a start at StitchCon and you guys know I love me some Halloween so I mean don't have to tell me twice. Don't have to tell me twice. I've actually been looking for this pattern and um, I even had posted months ago on an out of print page and someone had commented on it saying that Blackbird Designs was going to reprint it but I was like I don't want to wait. <laughs> Um, luckily I did wait though, because someone did try to charge me like $40 for their copy. And I was like, no, thank you. <laughs> so that's been, um, really like, I'm excited to start it kind of thing. And I know, I think Bridge in the Museum Stitcher is also going to bring that and start it. And you guys know she is my bestie. I absolutely love her. Um, no updates as well on my Stitchy Twins shirts that I purchased so that... <laughs> Her and I could have some t-shirts um, custom made. I haven't gotten any updates. I have messaged the designer of the company, but I haven't heard back from just yet. I'm hoping I can get them in time. I was told I, I would get them in time and I've got a couple more weeks, so we'll see what happens. Um, anyways, that's been just my main plan is getting stuff packed away. I was originally thinking that I was going to pack a, like or not pack, that I was going to do a pickup order at Acorns and Threads, but now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, you know what? It kind of like is gonna, it's not gonna be as fun if I do that. <laughs> that seems stupid, but I kind of just want to go in there and you know that like craze that you get when you're inside of a stitching store and you're shopping and like it hasn't been pre-picked out for you and like bundled up nicely and beautifully in a bag. No, no. I want it to be all in my sweaty hands while I'm sweating in the aisles that are really tight because that's always every cross stitch store. <laughs> and we're all wild in there, you know? It's like a frenzy. Um, I really wanna live that experience. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. I mean, not because I, I do sweat a little bit. <laughs> oh man, but I'm really excited about it. I think it's just gonna be so much fun. And I don't think I'm going to do a pickup order. I was originally thinking that I was going to make a, a floss list of all the flosses I need for my current projects. I do still think I'm going to do that and I'll snag up what I can if I see it, but I'm not going to put too much pressure on myself. Like you have to get all of this while you're here because I have an LNS and it's available there. I just got to make the trip out to her. So, um, you know, no big deal. I'm going to do that while I'm there is make the list and bring it with me, snag what I can. My main goal is really to focus on purchasing some more linens for my stash because I did cancel my fabric of the month. I just need larger cuts of linen. I love big projects. You guys know I love me a big girl. I, I love it. That's all I want in my life. Okay. And so I, I need these bigger cuts and I'm really into two over two stitching right now. <gasps> Who is she? I don't know. I literally don't know, but <laughs> I've been really into that. Um, so I'm excited. Those are kind of my, my preemptive plans. I always kind of knew I was going to need some linens when I went in to thread or not thread needle street but into their what is the the lns out there why am I, it's just spacing on me now i don't know i don't know well anyways while i'm at stitchcon 
I'm gonna purchase some linens, that's my goal. I probably will buy like one fully kitted up project while I'm there. And I just wanna really enjoy myself and enjoy some really good food. Oh, I can't wait. I'm hoping there's some good food places. Luckily, a girlfriend of ours, she got in last minute. She got an invoice, she's gonna be rooming with us. I don't know if she's talking about it on our channel or on any platform, so I don't wanna mention it because I don't wanna, you know, ruin the surprise <laughs> but she's renting a car so that makes it perfect because since she's renting a car we'll be able to kind of roll around the streets and get some tasty food I have been getting back into my workout routine too so I've been doing a lot of cardio every single day and that's kind of cut into my stitchy time and so let me tell you I'm very excited very excited to get to StitchCon and get my steps in by walking around a convention center <laughs> instead of on a treadmill <laughs> so it's been a great three weeks for me um just going through a lot but you know sometimes life is like that and I think sometimes you have to embrace the hard parts of life to maybe give myself some more character but I will say um, my character is very well written I don't think she needs anything added I'm just kidding <laughs> well anywho thank you so much for joining me guys and listen to me blabber on about my life um it's just crazy you know when I first started this a year ago I wasn't even thinking about like my daughter being in school and stuff and now she doesn't nap anymore crazy she turned five years old a couple months ago she is registered for school that's coming up in September oh my goodness oh can you believe it it's just wild times wild times um, but yeah, that is life right now. Everything's rolling and I guess that's everything. Well, I will catch you guys next time. I'll see you in a couple weeks from now and that's everything. All right. Love you. Bye. And then needle minder on, I know I told you guys. <laughs> Allergy season. <clears throat>